I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the common features of the Virtual Environment Manager PIPM. Virtual environments allow you to easily create Python sandboxes where you can install unique dependencies without interfering with your top-level Python environment. They also allow you to work on several projects simultaneously by creating a virtual environment for each and maintaining several different versions of maybe the same package in each environment. You may want to consider creating a virtual environment for each new project that you work on. The typical virtual environment workflow works like this. You first pip install virtual env or something similar. Uh, you make a directory. You run virtual env on that directory, change into that directory, activate the virtual environment. Then you pip install dependencies, create a requirements text file that you log each of these requirements in and then you start coding. So it may sound like a lot, and it, and it kind of is. And you should note that, okay, as soon as I start making changes to my dependencies, I'm gonna to have to update that requirements file. So pipm aims to streamline this process, and we're gonna see how to do that. So I'm gonna jump into the command line and get working on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pip install pipm, and then we're gonna be done with pip. Okay, with that done, I'm going to make my directory. Next, I'm going to switch into that directory. Okay, and now we have a few options for setting up our virtual environment. We're gonna start with pip env, and here we can specify a few things. We could specify a version like Python 2 or Python 3. All right, by default, it's gonna use whatever your default Python install is. And any version that you want to include has to already be installed on your machine and available from your path. Okay, the most common way people do it is to just type install, and this gets us our virtual environment. Okay, if we're ready to start working with our virtual environment, we type pip env and then shell. And this activates it. Now my prompt is prefaced by the test project in parentheses. That indicates that the virtual environment is active. I'm going to clear the screen. Okay, if we want to get out of that virtual environment, we just type exit. And now we're back. Okay, so I'm going to activate it once again. And we're going to install a requirement now. Now instead of using pip, we're going to use pip env. And then install. And I'll just get requests. Okay, next I wanna take a look at what's in this directory. So I am on a Mac, it works the same on Windows. We have different command lines. So this would be a dir instead of ls minus l. All right, and so you can see, okay, this is all that's in that folder. This is quite a bit different than when you use the virtual env software as it puts the whole Python installation in here. What pipm does is hide most of this stuff. So it kind of abstracts away a lot of the background chatter. All right, it creates these two files, pip file and pip lock. And let's just take a look at what's in pip file. Okay, so it's very simple. Uh, you can see that pretty much all it does is put in the the source. What it does is encrypts everything as you download it and make, makes sure that you are getting what you think you're getting. And here we can see all the packages that are installed for this project. All right, you can also see the Python version that it's using. Okay, the pip lock file is a file that contains the hashes that they use to download and verify the packages that you're installing. And uh, we would use this to freeze the requirements of this project on specific versions. All right, we're not going to take a look at it because there's not more information in there. Let me clear the screen one more time. If you want to see where the virtual environment is actually installed, we can run pip env and then the switch venv. And this will give you the location. All right, and you can see that it actually attaches a unique identifier onto the end of that project. All right, one thing you want to make sure you don't do is to create a virtual env or a pip env at the top level directory because this is going to interfere with any future environments that you try to make. Okay, so I'm going to jump into VS Code now and uh, demonstrate a little bit more of how this works. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open that folder. All right, and it's in my home directory, and there it is. Okay, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to save it as a Python file. Okay, so by default, this is using my top-level Python. What we want to do is switch it to the virtual environment. All right, so let's just test it out for now. I'm going to import something called PlaySound, and, and I'm, I haven't 
installed this, but I want you to see that when we create the virtual environment, we're actually creating an isolated environment. So I'm going to run this and I should get an error. Okay, and I did, so I, I don't have it installed here. All right, so the first thing I want to do is switch to the Python install in my virtual environment. So I'm going to do that by clicking down in the lower left there, and I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to find my test project pip env. I'm going to select that, okay, and uh, I'm going to activate it. Okay, so the nice thing about working with something like uh, Visual Studio Code is uh, that we get the terminal right here. So we don't have to switch back and forth between our command line and our editor. All right, so I'm going to pip env install play sound. Okay, and you can see some messages here as it does this. Instead of you going in manually and updating the pip file where it keeps all your project requirements, it updates it for you. All right, so you're never going to want to manually change this file. You're going to let the software manage it for you. Okay, so if I run this, it just runs without an error. Okay, if I exit and then switch my editor or my Python back to the base and I run this again, I'm going to get that error. So you can see that I installed play sound and it's independent of my top level Python. Okay, I'm going to switch back to this. All right, once I've done it once, I'm not going to want to switch around like this. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. Okay, so you're always going to want this virtual environment associated with this project. Write a quick script here. Okay, so I will make it start playing whatever's in this BEW MP3. Okay, this file's not currently in this folder, so I'm just going to copy it in there. All right, and before I run this, I'm going to, since I'm on a Mac, have to install Objective-C, all right, or the Python bridge between Python and Objective-C. So it's going to be pip env install pyobjc. Okay, so with all that done, let's run our script and see what's on this music file. And... Hopefully this gives you an idea of how to work with pip env. Takes them a minute to get going. Thanks for watching.